I, uh, I went out to a bar a while ago. I'm not good at it anymore. I don't like it. It's just people are crowded and loud music. And uh, the other night I was at this bar and I went to the bathroom and the bathroom's like one person at a time bathroom with a little hook on the door. So I'm waiting for the guy who's in there for a long time. Then the guy that works there walks by goes, you still waiting? I'm like, yeah. So he bangs on the door and he goes, come on, shit and get out. <laughs> and then he walks away. Now I gotta answer for that shit. I figured the hell with it. I'll go masturbate somewhere else. I don't need to be here anyway. I'll go to the Russian bakery. They don't mind over there. If you kill your father, it's called patricide. But what is it called when you rape your father? Still, stay with me. I got something. I'm going somewhere here. Look. I also need to know, what is, the, what is the penalty, like what's the charge for raping your dad? Has that ever come up in court? Is there like a mandatory sentence? Look, hear me out, I have a reason for all this. The reason is I think I, I, I have to rape my dad. And it's not, I don't want to rape my dad, I don't want to. I have a reason, you have to, look, rape is not cool. But if you're going to do it, you got to have a good reason. You know, like somebody you want to fuck them, they won't let you, that's the reason. But the reason I want to rape my dad, oh stop. The reason I want to rape my dad, or have to, is because he won't stop fucking calling me. And I don't like him, and I say, don't call, and he goes, alright. And then he calls, hi. I'm like, I fucking told you not to call. So I think I need to rape him for him to finally go, fuck, I don't want to call that dude again. That's the only thing that's going to work. I swear to God. And I need to know what the penalty is because I think I need to do it in front of a lot of people for it to really take. Like at Madison Square Garden during a fucking ice capades or a WNBA game or something, I don't know. I don't know. That's the kind of shit I think about, I'm sorry. It's in my head. Yeah, I know, it's fucked up, right? It's fucked up, it is. I'm on your side. I don't like it. I don't like keeping up nights with that shit in my head. I'm like, oh shit, what is wrong with you, buddy? <laughs> the other day we got in a huge one because here's what happened. Uh, we're moving a bunch of shit from one room to the other in the house. I don't know why. I don't know. I'm not even interested. I don't ask anymore. <laughs> I used to ask, but why the fuck am I asking? I'm gonna do it, just fucking do it. I gain nothing from knowing why we do this shit. So I'm moving a bunch of shit. She's on the phone saying, we're moving. You're not doing shit, I'm moving everything, but fine. Fine. I'm moving all this stuff, and I gotta check with her where each object goes in that room, because otherwise she'll come in and she'll go, that doesn't go there. It's never even been in this room before. How does it have a proper place in this room? So everything, where does the chair go in the thing? So I got this blanket, it's this big blanket that I don't know what's her mother's, I didn't listen to the fucking story, but I got this blanket and I got, no one's ever used it as a blanket, it's just a mess. And so I go, hey, where does the orange blanket go? And she goes, that blanket's not orange. Could you have a more useless response to any question? Where does the orange blanket go? It's not orange. If you know it's not orange, then you know what blanket I'm talking about, don't you? I'm only using the color to identify the cocksucking blanket so I can motherfucking put it where you want it to be. I don't have an ego about the color orange. I don't give a shit what color it is. I didn't say none of that shit to her, obviously. No, of course not. Of course not. Why would I? What would I gain from that? Like, I'm going to say that and she's going to go, Oh, yeah, I've always been crazy and you just made me realize it. You know, it's not going to happen. No. <laughs> never. I never get laid. A couple of weeks ago, finally, that we had sex because it was my birthday and she's like, Go ahead. So, <laughs> hey, fine. I do not need her to be into it. I just want to get fucking annually laid. That's all. I don't give a shit. And it, it's always, that's the fight. I don't feel like it. You don't have to fucking feel like it. I don't give a shit. 
And then we get into it, and now she feels like it. Now she's invested in it. Now I'm working for her again. Somehow it's no longer just fuck for me. It's like about her. And that's great. Look, I love her. So I always try, like the last time, I was trying not to come really hard because I like her. Fuck it. I want to give her a shot at it, you know? So I'm trying. Trying not to come. Very hard. Very hard. When you're ready to come and you want to not come because of your woman, that is really hard. I don't know if women really appreciate what goes into that shit. The kind of stuff you gotta think about. The thoughts you have to have. Because the force you're fighting is the universe. It's life on Earth trying to march forward and you're trying to stop that shit for her. Your body doesn't give a shit. You tell your body, hey, hold up, don't come. Your body's like, fuck you, what are you talking about? This is bigger than all of us here. And the only way to push that off is to have terrible images in your, like, weird, sick, fucked up things in your head. You need them. It's the only way. She's having a great time. She's just off thinking about flowers and puppies. I don't know. And the guy's thinking about, like, dog shit smeared on a dead guy or something like that in order to maintain her happiness. She's like passion and ecstasy, and he's like Liza Minnelli and Richard Nixon having a diarrhea fight. Something, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't like thinking about that shit. The way a little girl gets you is she cries. It breaks your heart when she cries most of the time. There are times, okay, this is what happened the other night. I'm bathing her and I'm washing her hair, which I don't do till it's like stiff because it's fucking really hard to wash her hair. Because, okay, here's what happens. Like, her hair's full of shampoo. Same thing every time I go, okay, I gotta rinse your hair. And I can't just pour water on her head because it gets in her eyes and it makes her cry. I don't want her to cry. But she's in denial. She's crazy. She just wants to play with her fish. She doesn't want to. I'm like, I need you to lean back and close your eyes. No, I don't want to. Well, you need to. <laughs> I want to play with my... No, I have to get the shampoo out of your hair. It's going to get in your eyes. No, it won't. Yes, it will, and it'll make you cry. I won't cry. I'm a big girl. No, you cry every fucking night when we do this. Don't tell me you're not going to cry. No, I'm not going to. I'm fine. And meanwhile, the, the shampoo's just inching down her head. It's like she's in denial. No, nothing's going to happen to me. And then it gets in her eyes and she's crying and crying and she's amazed and she's crying and I'm dumping water on her head and going, yeah, motherfucker, I told you that shit. <laughs> Big girl, my ass. Who's crying like a bitch now, huh? But anyway, now I live in a nice building and uh, I'm not used to it because it's nice. There's like a pretty courtyard with flowers and a fountain with little marble boys pissing. I don't know, what is it with fountains? Like all fountain sculptors are pedophiles, basically. You can't get a fountain made without, can you make me a fountain? Yes, I'll get started right away. Oh, oh yes, yes. It's finished. And it's just little boys pissing on the face of a Greek god that looks like him a lot. Ah, yeah. uh, it's piss on me forever! Anyway, there's one of those in the courtyard of my building. And, uh... My first week in the building, about a year ago, I went down to the courtyard for the first time. And uh, I didn't look too good, you know? It was a Sunday morning. That's my least presentable hour. There's a lot of, you know, just stains, just like, you know, food and me and whatever. And so I'm, si I'm sitting there. So, shut up. <laughs> oh. Anyway, but so there I was. I'm sitting on the stone bench of this courtyard and uh, feeling a little out of place. You know, there's these fancy doormen and stuff. And then there's this guy looking at me. I notice he's looking at me from across the courtyard. And he's all spiffy looking. He's got brown shoes and he's looking at me like, hmm. I could tell he was thinking I don't live in the building. He thinks I just wandered in off the street. 
and sat in the courtyard. And I could tell he's thinking of coming over and dealing with me on his own. And I'm sitting there thinking like, oh, please do that. Yes, please, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And I'm trying to look even more gross. And I'm like <laughs> pulling up my shirt. And, and then I see him go, oh, no, that's not going to do at all. And he comes over to me. Hmm. And I'm like, mm, 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 mm. I'm so excited to have this thing. The confrontation where I'm not wrong at all. And he thinks I am. So he comes over, says, uh, excuse me, do you live in this building? And I said, no. Because <laughs> why not start there? <laughs> I said, no. He goes, well, then what are you doing here? And I said, I just need to rest. I'm having a hard time. <laughs> he says, this is private property. And I said, well, I don't really believe in that. <laughs> you know. Just the worst things I could say from his point of view is basically all the things I was saying. And he goes, well, if you don't leave, I'm going to talk to the doorman. I was like, can I just stay like five more hours? So he's, hmm, no. And he goes over to the doorman. And I see him talking about me to the doorman like this. And then I see the doorman going, oh, no, that guy lives here. That's OK. <laughs> And the look on his face, it was just so, it was a, this beautiful cocktail of anger and confusion. It's like I had an invented a new way to hurt somebody's feelings. That's, that's how excited I was. He was so angry, he came back, he came back to me. He said, why didn't you tell me that you live here? And I said, because I don't have to tell you anything ever. <laughs> I, there are no words that I must say to you. Also, I didn't want to ruin your thing. That's your favorite thing you were doing. You love that. Making people not be places. Also, I make more than you. I just don't give a shit about myself. <laughs> I had a good day. I got a call today. Uh, my phone rang and, uh, and, it, and I answered it. I didn't, I didn't recognize the number. I said, hello? And the person said, uh, please hold for the president. I was like, what? And then a voice comes on. It sounded like the president. And he's like, oh, it's, it's President Obama. And I said, that, no, that's not you. <laughs> and he goes, Yes, it is. And I said, no, there's no way the president would ever call me. So he goes, all right, we'll just hang up and call the White House and ask for me and you'll get through it. Maybe that'll convince you. So I said, okay. And I hung up and I Googled the White House and I got like the main number and I called and said, hi, this guy was calling me. He said he was the president. My name's Louie. And she put me through. So all of a sudden I'm talking to the president. And I said, well, what can I do for you? And he goes, uh, I don't know, what's, what's, what's up? <laughs> and uh, he said, where are you? I said, I'm in uh, Phoenix. And he said, uh, I heard they're all fags there. <laughs> I know, I know. And I was like, first of all, Phoenix is not known for that? Second of all, who says fags? Like, who says just fags? And then beyond that, how dare you, Mr. President? And he says, so go tell everybody who's going to believe you, you fat douche. And he hung up. I was really surprised. That's what I would do. If I was the president, I would just bother people. I would just fly around the country, go to like Wisconsin, go to some guy's house at three in the morning and just drink out of the milk carton. So tell everybody, just piss on the floor. Who's going to believe you? Yeah, go tell everybody the president pissed on your floor at three in the morning. Go ahead. To me, that would be the whole point of being president. 
is getting to do that. I work a lot of different kinds of places. I, uh, sometimes I play clubs or theaters, and sometimes I play casinos. Casinos are fun because, first of all, they pay just dick shitloads of money. Just crazy. That's more than shitloads, because it's dick shitloads. I guess because some came out your dick, because it's even more. So, and then they just give the tickets to criminals or whatever. It's a weird, it's a weird show, a casino. But I like casinos because it's a place of extremes. When you stand at a casino gaming floor, you just see a life destroyed every 10 seconds. Just constant, oh God, no, Jesus. It's just despair and old ladies with buckets of quarters. Just, I don't know if you've been to a casino, but old ladies are like the plankton of casinos. They kind of flow in the mouth, just dump all their quarters, and then get shit out dead out the back. There's a constant flow of buses and ambulances. in every casino. <laughs> and the dog. The dog's not a dog. That's not a dog. A dog sniffs and pees. This dog just stands there until at some random moment just just stuff just discharges just a pink cloud. She dies like a year later and the cops come to her house. Hey man, there's a dog in the toilet. There's a dog in there. There's about a thousand shits on his face. <laughs> yeah, most of us don't get eaten. That's a very uncommon way for a human being to die, uh, is getting eaten. But we still have fear. We still have that fear that comes from having been in the food chain, but we don't know what to do with it. Especially in America, because there's not that much that's that scary. So we just have weird fear. Like, mm, I'm afraid of elevators. <laughs> If you're being chased by lions, you would not be afraid of elevators. <laughs> Sometimes I have fear that wakes me up in the middle of the night. Have you ever had that? Just in the middle of the night. I had this one night this summer. I was, this, I was sleeping alone in my house. And then like at four in the morning, I got woken up by a terrifying sensation, which was that something touched me. <laughs> Somebody touched my body. In the middle of the night, I felt this. Three times I felt and I woke up <gasps> and there's nobody there, but I'm like, there's somebody here. You ever wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, there's someone in the room. So what do you do? You just lay perfectly still. Cause these are the rules that you decide on. As long as I don't move, they can't begin harming me yet. Why would that be the case? instead of the opposite of that. Like someone's in your room with a knife over your bed. I wish he would move so I could stab him. <laughs> anyway, as I'm having all these thoughts, I happen to be looking at a chair that's in my room. It's very dark, so I can just make out that there's something on the chair, like a sweater or something, or a towel maybe. And I'm kind of looking at it. And as I looked at it, it moved to the other chair. And I saw it. And I made a noise I'd never made in my whole life. I went, Aah! And I was immediately so disappointed that that's the noise I make when the shit goes down. Because you can't choose that noise. It just comes out of you. And then I start hitting the lamp on the table next to me. I'm just hitting it. Because when you're scared, you can't work little electronic-y, switchy things. Help! Because fear turns your hands into just paddles. They just become like wooden paddles.
Anyway, somehow the light actually went on. And there on the chair was a cat. I don't have a cat. There's just all of a sudden a fucking cat in my room. And he's looking at me with that asshole cat face like... And I go, ah! And he runs out the window. So he must have come in the window. That's what I figured out. <laughs> he came in the window and then he walked on my body. I was just used to not have, my mom used to be aggressively poor. Like when we would go shopping, she would buy the worst version of everything, even if it wasn't cheaper. Like just to go, we're poor. Like she would buy saltine crackers with no salt on them. Saltless saltine crackers. And you could tell they had salt on them. They're pock marks. But they made them with salt. And then the guy in the saltine factory takes his Discover card and scrapes off the salt or something. He was so angry, he came back. He came back to me. He said, why didn't you tell me that you live here? And I said, because I don't have to tell you anything ever. There are no words that I must say to you. Also, I didn't want to ruin your thing. That's your favorite thing you were doing. You love that! Making people not be places. Also, I make more than you. I just don't give a shit about myself. Anyway, he didn't say anything after that because, uh, well, the whole thing didn't really happen. <laughs> I mean, well, it's, it's not true, but it's as, it's as true as anything that does happen. I mean... <laughs> Really, anytime anybody says anything to me, I decide what they said anyway. The, tr the truth of this story, and I won't lie to you again, but here's what really happened. I was sitting in the courtyard looking like shit, that's true, and the guy was looking at me, but then the rest of it I just made up in my head, just, just an angry, hateful, rich dick. You probably want to kick me out. And then here's what I would say, and then you would do this, and then... I would say these three really cool things right in a row. And of course he set me up for all of them because I'm him too. It's kind of hard to lose an argument when you're both people and it's taking place in your brain. And then in reality, he really did come up to me and he said, are you new to the building? And I said, yeah, I just moved here. And he said, oh, welcome. He was so nice. He was incredibly nice. And he's been, for the last year, he's my favorite person in the world. He's George, my neighbor George. He's probably watching. I love George. He's the greatest. 